Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is my review for The Leftovers Season 1, Episode 8, Cario. And wow, this episode was just huge. I love this episode. Loved everything happening. Loved the twists of this episode, especially that ending. Oh my god, I was not expecting that death at the end. I really was not expecting it. It was probably the most graphic thing I've seen on HBO so far, but... I absolutely love this episode. That was absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's only two episodes left of this season, so definitely things are going to start to escalate, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen in the rest of the season. But let's just get this episode, because overall, I really enjoyed it. thought this was an amazing episode, and just really, really enjoyed it. By the way, this was the first episode. This is the one episode. You know how I have said the GR is, like, not that interesting, in my opinion? The things that happen with the GR... The reason is because they made the GR just seem like these monsters and, like, just monsters. And this was the first episode, I think, where we they humanized the GR. We got to see a more human version of the GR. They really humanized them this episode, and I really liked that about this episode. I was happy they decided to just humanize them. I was happy about that. So basically we see Kevin, he's against his chronicle nemesis Patty, the leader of a sect that's of, you know, the GR. Um, basically we see Kevin at home preparing dinner, and I like that they did this. We also see Patty alone in an empty church auditorium, um, setting out cues closed on the floor, and she puts up entire ensembles together, meaning, uh, basically shorts, shirts, and tiny sneakers for a child, a skirt and dress, and necklace for a woman. So, yeah, that was interesting. So Nora is on her way to a um, date with Kevin, and she ends up getting, like, attacked by the GR, because we know, you know, the GR don't really like her. So Kevin's hosting a dinner. Basically, he wants Jill and Amy to get to know, um, you know, Nora a little bit better, which I like this. I thought it was good that this happened. Um, basically, Jill asks Nora, but it ends up not really going really well. This dinner does not end up going well, because Jill ends up asking Nora um, one very important question, some very personal questions, basically, um, you know, why she carries a gun. And Nora says because it made her feel better, but that she no longer needs to. And she then offers Jill her purse, inviting her to go through it, and confirms this. And Kevin is pretty pissed off at Jill right now because she's being extremely rude. And, you know, she's being very rude. But Nora, you know, diffuses the confrontation, and he's walking her to her car. She assures him it'll get better, and Kevin asks how, I don't know, and she replies, but it will. So Nora's concerned about Jill, definitely. I like that Nora's concerned about her. I definitely feel like Nora is going to be the, you know, even though Lori is more of a mother to Nora than, I mean, even though Lori is more of a mother to Jill than uh, Nora is, Nora definitely is going to try to be the mother figure in Jill's life, definitely. So, then we see the bl the big black dog tied up behind the Garvey house, um, basically, um, Kevin tries to fall asleep in bed and parks in a, you know, very grisly, horrific adventure, and he basically wakes up, um, he wakes up, um, where, where does he wake up? He tries to fall asleep, and he wakes up in the cab of his pickup truck, and we see Dean, that mysterious sharpshooter, and dog hunting, and the dog hunting and aspiring buddy of Kevin. He has been tapping on the window, and it's morning, and Kevin finds that, and he has fallen asleep in his truck in the middle of the woods. So, that's really weird. Now, remember, he has no recollection of what happened the last night. He has no recollection of it at all. Um, so... He's completely disoriented right now. He has no idea what's going on. He follows Dean to a nearby cabin. There he finds Patty bound to a chair. Her clothes are bloodstained from wounds around her mouth. And um, Dean observes and says, Maybe you hit her a little too hard. Um, and basically, uh, Dean is injured in front of his protestations of amnesia and retorts. And um, basically, from Dean's cryptic message... Kevin believes that he kidnapped Patty and brought her out to the cabin because he does not remember what happened at all. So he approaches Patty, who is slowly coming to it. You know, she was out of it, and now she's coming to. And um, basically, she he says, um, you know, he tells her, things got a little out of control last night. He will free her and bring her back out, and neither will say anything. But Patty ends up spitting in his face, rejects the offer, warning that she will report everything to the authorities, and Kevin will lose his job. She goads him, saying, finish what you started, my friend. And uh, she's pretty pissed off at him, we can see. Definitely very pissed off. Um, definitely. So yeah, she's definitely pretty pissed off at him, and uh, I thought that scene was just really, um, really interesting, the way that was um, working out. 
So then we see members of the GR. They're wondering where Patty is, and Lori is basically taken mm. over to step into the leader's role. And we see Meg. She is beating the living shit out of Matt. Like she's literally just going crazy, beating the shit out of Matt. I thought she was going a little too far, but I can understand why she's kind of pissed off. I mean, I, I understand definitely why she's upset. Um, you know, she's punching him definitely, and she has hysterically attacked Matt and. He appears to actually, you know, he, um, you know, he's also Nora's brother, obviously, and he's been trying to peel away GR members with tactics, you know, he's trying to stop the GR attacks, he's been trying to stop it for a while now, and I think, you know, this was just going a little too far. And what I really liked about this next scene is, as I said, that again, this is the episode where they humanize the GR, this is the episode where we actually get to care about the GR a little bit more. And Lori insists that Meg apologize to Matt because, you know, that's the right thing to do because obviously Meg was going crazy. So the two of them decide to walk over to his house and Meg has collected herself enough to cease speaking and resume her cold ordered silence. You know, because she wasn't speaking because she was speaking before. She's just, I think Meg is just going a little bit crazy. That's really what's going on. But Matt says he isn't giving up on her. The uneasy piece is broken by Nora, who suggests to Lori that if she's handling out apology, and this is very interesting, if she's handing out apologies, she might want to have a chat with her daughter, Jill. Um, because Jill definitely, again, Nora really wants to help Jill. She wants to really help her and find a way to help her. And, um, yeah, that was definitely very interesting because... Jill is definitely in need of parental attention because she's smoking pot with her friends, you know, Amy and the Frost Twins, and um, she gets into a terrible fight with Amy over whether Nora has a gun. Jill is convinced Nora must have one because there's no way anyone who lost her entire family could ever be okay, and Amy says Jill just doesn't think any anyone could be okay, period. And I understand why Amy says that. Jill doesn't seem to think anyone could be okay. And this somehow leads Jill to ask Amy. This asks Amy, Jill asks Amy probably the weirdest question ever. And I mean, this makes sense, definitely, why she decided to ask her this. She says to Amy, did you sleep with my father? You know, she says that to her. And uh, Amy says, yes, she did. And this makes sense, because if you remember in episode mm -hmm. two, Kevin was actually having a vision of her. Um, you know, she was having a, a, a vision of her, definitely. You know, she was having a, a vision of, um, uh, he was having a vision of her, and we didn't know what that leads to, so it definitely makes sense that he and her have some sort of a relationship. In fact, Amy actually said to Jill that Kevin is keeping it secret from her, and, you know, Jill doesn't believe anything about it. Jill just doesn't want to believe it at all, and, um, you know, Jill thinks, oh no, this can't be true at all, and, uh, basically Amy ends up storming off, and they're in a fight right now. So Jill and her friends, they go, they break into Nora's house to look for the gun, and they goof, and, um, you know, the Frost friends are goofing off in the living room, they're trying to figure out, you know, if, um, Amy really did sleep with Kevin, and Jill goes up to the bedroom of Nora's dead son, finds the pistol in, uh, the board game Trouble, of course it's Trouble, um, under the bed, and, um, she just, she decides to just run away, and basically... Ends up happening, or the Frost Twins see her, and they're like, "Do you need any help?" And um, and uh, Jill's just like, "Let's just get the hell out of here." And uh, they decide to leave. So they got the fuck out of there, I guess. Um, that's what ended up happening there. So then we see um, that uh, basically, we what we see after this is we see Dean is troubled at how Patty seems to be getting the upper hand. She points out to Kevin that there are no public records about his friend, no driver's license, that kind of thing leaving him something of a ghost. In other words, he won't be much use as an alibi. And Dean says, I prefer to think of myself as a guardian angel. He pulls Kevin outside, tries to basically steal his nerve and get him ready to kill Patty because he really, because I guess Kevin and Dean, the, the night before, their plan was to kill Patty. That's what they were going to do. They were going to capture her and they were going to kill her, which makes sense because Patty's the leader of the GR. You know, the GR is the thing that's causing them all the stress and Kevin really doesn't want the stress anymore. I understand this, definitely. I, I definitely understand why that's happening. Um, I, I really do understand that. So, um, so yeah, I definitely thought that was interesting. So basically, Kevin insists he doesn't want to hurt her, and Dean counters, oh, yes, you do, after what she took from your town, your family, there has to be consequences. Especially the fact that, you know, she took his wife, basically. Um, and he despairs of Kevin ever getting the courage to do the killing and says he will take things into his own hands. And, uh, Kevin at this point does not know what to do. He's wandering through the woods. And he's appalled to come across his white shirts. Remember those white shirts in episode 5 they couldn't find? Yeah, guess what? He finds them. He finds those white shirts. He finds the white shirts right there. It's like, what? Why are the white shirts there? He tears them down, gets the straws. He can't remember what he did. Again, he can't remember what happened the night before. Honestly, this was one of the coolest things they did. Because again, the last episode, Kevin, of course, asked Nora, am I going crazy? 
And again, he's thinking, am I going crazy? He calls Nora, leaves a very important message her, and says, just call me when you get the message. And he then goes back into the cabin and discovers that Dean has tried to suffocate Patty. You know, Patty has a bag over her head, and he's tried to suffocate her, basically. So, Kevin tries to pull the bag from her head, and Dean attacks him. The two end up brawling, smashing windows, wrecking the cabin, and Patty gasps to stay alive. Now, Kevin shakes loose of Dean and tears the bag from Patty's head, and Dean bolts, I wanted to help you. You are on my own, chief. And basically, Kevin is going to, you know, with or without Patty, the GR are also doing, you know, there's, there's still, still stuff going on with the GR. Because the GR are getting busy in the church. They recently brought from a bankrupt um, Matt, and a truck pulls up, and Lori pays the driver from the cargo. What appears to be dozens of corpses of all shapes and sizes, babies and adults, and Lori mobilizes everyone into carrying the bags inside, pairing them with the outfits Patty had set out on the floor. So that's why she had set those outfits out, because there are other members that are going to join, I guess. I guess that's what's going on. Now, here's the thing. It seems like Lori knows what she's doing, definitely. She knows that she... It seems like she can actually function the, um, you know, the, uh, the GR all by herself. It seems like Lori's actually in a very good uh, position, definitely. But then we get probably the, the second most surprising scene in the episode. I thought this was very surprising, because we hear... Um, Basically, Jill arrives home. Well, not that yet. Jill then arrives home and sees that Amy, um, basically Amy, um, has been camping out the garb. You know, she's been living with, uh, you know, Kevin and Jill for months. And she's finally leaving. And they have a very awkward farewell. Jill takes a kitchen knife, heads outside, walks toward the wild dog tied up in the yard, cuts his rope, and frees him. So, that's obviously not good. Jill is definitely, that was not a good decision. I, I gotta say, Jill did not make a good decision there, obviously. Um... Definitely, I, I do not think Jill made the best decision there at all, pretty much. Um, but I definitely thought that was interesting. I mean, all right, fine. Um, that was weird, but um, that's what she ended up doing. She ended up, like, cutting the dog from the rope and setting it free. That's what she ended up doing. So basically, then what ends up happening is probably we get the... Here's where we get the second most surprising scene of the episode. We hear someone knock on the door, and uh, there's a knock on the door, and, you know, it says, and a Meg opens the door, and we hear this woman say, can I stay here? And it turns out that it is Jill. So, yes, Jill is going to stay at the GR. She's probably going to become a member of the GR, and uh, this is just, this is really big, because I did not expect anything like that to happen at all. I thought that was a very good twist, in my opinion. Definitely really enjoyed that twist. That was a very, very good twist, in my opinion. Um, just really, wow, such a great twist there, really like that, really great stuff going on there, um, really looking forward to, um, the next, really, I mean, uh, just really looking forward to what happens next as far as that goes, I mean, that was great, I mean, Jill going to the GR is the best thing that could have happened, because Lori, honestly, is listening to Nora now, it seems like she actually is going to make the GR better, it really seems like it, it seems like Lori's actually gonna make the GR better, she's gonna be able to function it more, and I like Lori as the leader of the GR. I do. I think she's a better leader than um, than Patty, definitely. Because I think because then we see that we're back to uh, Kevin and Patty. Basically, Patty at this point she keeps saying, "Kevin, I want you to kill me. I want you to kill me." And you know she because the GR of course is devoted to remembering the sudden departure. And she says because it's not going to be long now. And she's less specific on what is actually going to happen than she is about the GR's um, raisin. And basically, she gives him this very long speech, which I really liked, and I'm going to basically quote what she said. She says, We strip away the colorful diversions that keep us from remembering. We strip away attachment, fear, love, hatred, anger, until we are all erased. Until we are a blank state, we are living reminders of what you try so desperately to forget, Kevin, who, and Kevin. He is too dazed to argue, and he merely rejects the entire premise, and he says, No, I don't understand. He fails to point out that those in Maple Town have actually gone on with their lives are considerably less glum than, um, you know, because, like, think about it. Nora was very depressed, but now she's not. Matt was very depressed, but now he's not. So, basically, he's not telling her the whole thing, that not everyone is really this depressed. Um, or that there is no explanation for why the GR would do something like this. You know, we don't know why they just do nothing but stare and chain smoke and work hard to be unattractive. We don't know why they do that. They just do. Um... And then we get some very important information, because Patty says to Kevin, why do you have such a problem with us? I thought this was just a really good question what she said to him. She says, why do you have such a problem with us? You know, basically, he really just wants answers to burning questions we've all been wondering. And she then reveals the entire purpose. To, you know, we basically know why this is happening. 
Basically, you know, basically she he sa um, she says to him that we strip ourselves of everything that distract us from us. We really reminders what you try so desperately to forget. Um, and she also cops to organizing the stoning me of of member Gladys. That's why um, that happens. So Patty fails at her attempt to make Kevin snap and or convert, and um, it doesn't end up working because then he, she tells him about Lori that Lori did not join the GR because of um, you know because he failed her as a husband. Yes, that's what they talked about, but she joined the GR because she gave him something that he could not. And, um, you know, that was definitely very big that that happened. So now we know why people join the GR. They join the GR because, basically, they are... The GR is a distraction from reality, really. Um, that's really what it is. It's, it's really a distraction from reality, and it's people that really can't let... I guess, I guess what Patty's really... I mean, it's really hard to explain. I'm, I'm going to try to do my best to an analyze this. I think what Patty is really trying to say here is she's trying to say that um, we are, you know, every, this is how people get over it. We are the living reminders of what, you know, when she says we are the living reminders of what you try to desperately forget. I think what she's trying to say is the people that can't let go of, you know, like they're never going to be able to let go of the uh, sudden departure. That's why they go to the GR, because they just, they can't let go of it. They can't get over this. They, they can't. They, it's just, it's too depressing for them, and that's why they go to the GR. It's that simple. And that explains why Jill went over to the GR. Jill went over to the GR because she can't get over the fact of losing her mom to the GR, and she doesn't want to. So, it's basically gonna, it's basically her distraction from reality. That's kind of what this is. Um, so, it definitely makes sense now. But, um, basically, Kevin then heads over to a toolbox. She has not convinced him at all. He pulls out a knife and he says to her, you're going home. And if that means telling the truth to everyone, losing my job, I'm going to do it. He doesn't care. He tells her, I'm, I don't care. I'm taking you home. I don't care. Um, he says he'd rather tell people what he did than try to understand her crazy ways. You know, he doesn't, he just wants to understand, he just wants people to know what he did. You know, he doesn't really want people to know the truth. And basically, he ends up slicing open the tape, freeze Patty. But after standing up, I, this was very surprising, Patty takes this hefty shard of glass from the floor, slits her throat, and uh, this was just like, I mean, I was just so surprised by how far this went, because Kevin runs over, catches her in his arms, and he's asking, what did, what the, and he's like, what the fuck did you do? And uh, Patty's dying, obviously, and she, the last thing she says is, you understand. Um, so, yeah, that was basically the end of the episode, and I thought this was an amazing episode. I mean, finally, finally, we know what the GR is all about. It's people's escape from reality. That's really what it is. It's their escape from reality, definitely. Um, I, I just have to say, definitely, it is, it is one of the... This show is becoming a lot better now, especially after this episode. I'm really loving this show now. A lot of things to talk about. One... I am thinking that Lori is actually going to make this GR better. Think about it. She is actually can control it. You know, she uh, stopped Meg from doing something bad. She made Meg apologize. This is the first time when we've actually seen the GR have some sort of feeling for something. Because the GR seemed like they were, were emotionless. And we really saw them actually have feelings in this episode. And it humanized them. I like that about this episode. This episode really humanized the GR. It made us understand why the GR is doing what they're doing. I really like that about this episode. Um, Jill going to Lori, I think, is the best thing to do. You know, Nora really wants Lori to control Jill. So I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen here. Is Jill going to become a member of the GR? Is Kevin going to lose Jill to the GR? We'll have to see what happens there. As far as Amy goes... I don't know what's going to happen there. Did Amy tell the truth? Did she actually sleep with Kevin? Are they, like, in a secret relationship that uh, that Nora doesn't know about? Is Kevin going to tell Nora about this? I don't know. We'll have to see what happens there. Um, does Kevin understand what Patty was trying to say? You know, is he going to try to... I, I don't know. You know, we'll have to see what happens there. I, I really don't know what's going to happen next, but... This episode was amazing. Really looking forward to the next episode. There was no Tom storyline in this episode, which honestly was good because it did not need to be in this episode. Um, but that's it for my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys saw this episode. Overall, in my opinion, by far the best episode of the season. I mean, they went really far with killing off Patty. The way they killed off Patty was such a good way. They really, again, this episode really humanized a lot of the characters and made us understand why this crazy shit with the GR is going on. It made us understand what the GR's purpose is. It made us understand why Lori joined the GR. And um, I'm really looking forward to the last two episodes. I think the last two episodes are going to be really good. 
and I'm really looking forward to, um, oh, also, The Leftovers was renewed for a second season. I forgot to talk about this. Let's talk about this. Does The Leftovers deserve its renewal? Yes, it definitely does deserve its renewal. It's actually become a very good show. I'm surprised by how much I love this show. This is a very good show now, and I'm really enjoying it now. So I'm really enjoying the show, and I'm really looking forward to the next episode. But that's basically for my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in my next review, which will be for my review of um, of tonight's episode of Switched at Birth. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.